Autism is a complex neurodevelopmental condition affecting 1 out of 59 individuals. Sensory sensitivities are an important diagnostic criteria of autism as they impact about 90% of individuals. A common trope about this symptom is that individuals with autism miss the forest for the trees. In other words, they are highly perceptive of details at the expense of the big picture. This detail-oriented perception is notable in visual perception studies. In tasks like this, autists are quick to detect the embedded letter H, but slower to find the E formed by those Hs. We call this strong local attention, but weak global attention. How does the sensitivity to local details scale during real-world visual experiences? When we enter a scene like this one, we immediately begin to process it, almost instantaneously recognizing it as Baker Library's lobby. What features of the scene are most important for this? Doors and windows? the people interacting, or are we drawn to finer details like the contrast of floor tiles? Generally, people process scenes like this using big picture features, like the passageways and spatial layout. Does this differ in people with autism who are known to excel at local perception? In the Robertson Lab, I explore visual processing and autism using a novel combination of virtual reality, eye tracking, and computer vision models called convolutional neural networks, or CNNs. In studies in our lab, participants explore real-world scenes using virtual reality headsets. Just like they do in the real world, participants actively control how they explore the scene with self-directed head and eye movements. While they explore, we can measure where they're looking using in-headset eye tracking. After participants explore the scene, we can quantify what they pay attention to by taking all of the data from our eye trackers and building a gaze map. In these maps, the hotter spots indicate where a person looked and for how long. And when we compare gaze maps across people, we can identify individual differences in gaze behavior specific to the condition. To model these differences empirically, we can compare our participants' gaze maps with CNNs. These are great tools for understanding human vision because they're structured like the human visual cortex and operate using similar rules and features. They can be trained for specific tasks like object recognition or place recognition. I can show a CNN our scenes and determine what it finds most important in the image. A place recognition model, for example, shows most heat around big picture attributes of the scene, like the expanse and the horizon. An object recognition model highlights more specific local attributes, like objects and animals. And when we compare a participant's gaze maps with these CNN models, we can ask our forest versus trees perception question within a natural environment and answer it with an unbiased, data-driven metric. Developing strong objective measures of the sensory symptoms hallmark of autism is essential to understanding the condition. My project is the first of its kind to identify the features of real-world environments that drive atypical visual attention in autism. In the future, such methods could inform autism diagnoses and models of the condition. This would be an invaluable step in lowering the age of autism diagnosis, improving the consistency of diagnosis, and creating a more sensory-friendly society.